do have a lot to be thankful for. We just mm. finished out our our week of Thanksgiving, and uh, I'd like to give anybody an opportunity to share something that you're thankful for that God has blessed you in some way. If you want to take a minute or a half a minute. <laughs> I'm so thankful for uh, just a Christian family. And uh, when we go and visit with my side of the family, not, not, uh, not many of them are faithful in church, but the ones that are, it's a joy always to be with them. But when we're Brenda's family, the majority of them are saved and in church. Most of them are serving Christ in some capacity. And it's just such a contrast between the yeah. two. <clears throat> it is such a joy to see the fruit of Christianity and what Christ does in people's lives who try to yield uh, to Him. And so I just, I'm, I'm glad for that Amen. living example. I share the same blessing, so I'm thankful for that. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Praise God for that. I wouldn't know what that's like. <laughs> <clears throat> Who else has a blessing? Josiah? Okay. Brother Phil? Amen, Josiah Jesus. What did he say out of Yeah. That's a good thing. forgiveness, yes. his long suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Brother? Uh, I'd just like to add to what Brother Phil said, his patience. Mm. Yeah. Especially with him. <clears throat> and uh, I just thank the Lord for that. Amen. <clears throat> yes, sir. I want to be thankful that he's going to allow us to go back out there and witness the people. This Amen. Time. And hopefully we'll have people to turn around and come to them. Yes. And come to our house. Let our house grow in His name. Yes. So it's all His that we come here for, to listen to His perfect Word. And right. I want to thank this house that I'm coming to, the house of God, that is all true God. Mm. Amen. Thank you for a pastor that talks about the truth of God. Amen. And I just love this place. Amen. And I just love my dear wife that sits next to me was able to come to this house. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Y'all are a blessing to us. Amen. Anybody else? <laughs> well, turn, it, if you would, to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, verse 19 is what we're going to read. <clears throat> but the title of this message tonight is Make Peace. Mm. Make Peace. Don't you love being around... Uh, people who are peacemakers. Yes, yeah. amen. Um, when you're around them, you feel valued mm. and respected yeah. and like you matter mm. when you're around them. Uh, on the other hand, are different fingers. Just That was a joke. <clears throat> okay, on the other hand... <laughs> When you're around the other type of people who are not peacemakers, you feel insulted. You really don't even want to be around them. You kind of you kind of avoid them. When you see them coming, you dart around the corner somewhere else. Right? It ain't pleasant being around those type of people. 
Uh, my mother was a peacemaker. She couldn't stand arguing or fighting or uh, anything that was contrary. She just it was she was really irritated when something like that would come up. But she loved to make peace. She would try to um, help us. She used to. She's probably quoted the verse in Matthew chapter five thousands of times. Blessed are they which are peacemakers, because <clears throat> we'd be at each other and arguing or whatever, and that would be the verse that she would Amen. sling out. Amen. Uh, so we heard it many times. Um, but I like to be around those kind of people. We ought to be those kind of people, yes. all of us. Amen. It's not a gift. It's not uh, in your personality. It's not in your genes to be a peacemaker. It's something that we ought to do. Mm. It's a command. Okay. In Romans chapter 14 and verse 19, the Bible says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. Mm. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for this particular passage in Your Word that You have brought us to. And I pray that You would uh, illuminate our mind and our eyes, help us to, to hear and understand what Your Holy Spirit has for us. Lord, I pray that You would especially help me to say the things I should and relay the message that You have for Your people. Lord, I thank You for that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I also want to turn back to the beginning of the chapter because this chapter has a lot to say about this issue of making peace in the church amongst ourselves. Okay? So let's start there in verse 1 of chapter 14. The Bible says, Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not the doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. And I asked Brother Tommy this question. I said, Brother Tommy, is, does that verse mean that a vegetarian is weak? <laughs> it kind of sounds like it to me, but anyway, he never got back to me, so that until he does, that's what I'm going to think it means. <clears throat> anyway, Verse 3, Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth for, this is important, get this now, for God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or, or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. I'm going to stop right there for just a second. You ever notice how some people, when you greet them, they, they want to say uh, something that proves or signifies that they're just having a great day. Mm -hmm. Right? <clears throat> well, I like to be that type of, type of person sometimes, most of the time. But then there are some people that when you say something to them like that, like, happy, happy Friday, or are you having a great day? And they look at you and go, no, <laughs> I'm not. Why do you ask? And they seem kind of sour. You know what? They, they may have some problems. They may have some problems that we're not aware of, but, you know, it, it, but it's okay for them to feel like this is not a really good day today. Amen. What I'm saying is, or what God is saying here is, one man esteemeth uh, one day a good day and the next day not so good, and another man may esteem every day alike. What he's saying is, don't get aggravated with people who see the day differently than you. We want to judge other people because they don't see things the way we see them. Mm. And if we're going to be peacemakers, we've got to learn how to accept their view because it's their view and it's okay. For God hath 
received Him. Now, I'm not talking about convictions here. Yeah. Okay? I'm not saying that if this person says, I don't, I don't the Holy Spirit hadn't dealt with me about drinking. So is it okay for them to drink because the Holy Spirit no. hadn't done it? Of course not. The Bible's very clear that that's unwise. <clears throat> In fact, the Bible says don't even look at it. Yeah. So we're not talking about convictions here. There's no conviction about esteeming a day better than the other. That's a preference. That's an opinion. That's what we're talking about. That's what Paul is hovering over right here. Okay? <clears throat> Verse number 6. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth eateth to the Lord. By the way, when he's talking about eating here, he's not talking about <clears throat> just going and having a meal. Back in this day was a very difficult time for Christians. And the reason is because the Jews for thousands of years were told not to eat pork. They were told not to eat chicken. They were told not to eat any fish that didn't have a scale. Okay, so there was a certain types of food that they were commanded not to eat. And then after Jesus' resurrection, the ban was lifted. Right. <clears throat> And then a lot of these Gentiles got saved we, who, who were not following this, uh, this thing of not eating pork or bacon or anything like that anyway. And then they get saved and they're used to eating chicken and st stuff like that. And so they were coming to the same church. <laughs> and when they had dinner on the grounds, there were people looking at him going. And it was causing some problems and Paul was dealing with that. Mm. This was a difficult time because you had these Jews who were Christians. They had believed on Jesus. But they weren't going to eat pork because that's what they knew. All their life, their parents' life, their grandparents' life, right on back all the way to right. Moses. This was a difficult time in the church. That's what he's talking about when he uses the term eateth or eateth not. Okay? Verse 7, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Amen. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account to himself to God. You know why he brings that up? <clears throat> Because you might have a problem with that person because they don't wear a tie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God's going to hold them accountable if that's wrong. Right. If it's not wrong, He's still going to hold them accountable for it, not you. Mm. Right? Right. When I was at Camp Tracy, we, we had to have a dress code. And by the way, dress code is important. Yeah. In fact, it's so important you can't get a job in some places if you don't abide by it. Mm. <laughs> but at Camp Tracy, we had a dress code. And we required that the boys wore a belt and they tucked their shirts in at all times. I mean at all times. If we were out there working and their shirt come untucked, that's fine. When we got done working and we were cleaning up, getting ready to leave, took a shirt back in. That's what we required. <clears throat> and because of that, my mind tells me, okay, if you don't got your shirt tucked in uh, and you're a man, you're not right. Something ain't right with you. 
What that was was being judgmental on my part. Until God opened my eyes and said, you know what? There's nothing in the Bible that says you, that a man should tuck his shirt in. That's a preference. But if we allow these differences to get under our skin, what can happen is it will be, turn into strife, it will turn into a fight, an argument, and a division in the church. Mm. A division in the family. Mm. A division amongst friends. A divi even among husband and wife. Right? Mm. Mm. All because we see things differently. And again, we're not talking about convictions here. We should, we should stand on conviction. There's no giving there. So then he goes on and he says this, verse 13, Let us not therefore judge one another anymore. Paul said, stop it. But judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Amen. Now, how do we do that? Well, he tells us, verse 14, I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Mm -hmm. What he's saying right there is, if you think you need to keep your shirt tucked in, then tuck it in. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you don't, you're wrong. Yeah. If you think you need to keep your shirt tucked in and you're not doing it, you're messing up. Mm -hmm. Don't get upset with that guy that isn't. Right. That's what he's saying. Then he goes on. <clears throat> but if verse 15 but if thy brother be, be grieved with thy meat this is important right here now walkest thou not un, uh, charitably destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died mm. I'm going to spell this one out for us right here <clears throat> if you have a friend or a, whoever an acquaintance or somebody in the church even that don't feel that it's good or right to eat pork <clears throat> don't invite them over for supper and cook ham and bacon and all that sort of thing right. fried chicken that's not right he said you're going to destroy them mm. in other words don't force don't flaunt your freedom Right. in Christ in front of somebody that feels like what you're doing is wrong just because you can. Paul is saying that's not right. Mm -hmm. That's not love. That's what he's saying. You're not doing charitably or lovingly. Right. Amen. <clears throat> and this is important because we all have differences here. We all didn't come from the same mom and daddy. We all didn't grow up in the same place. And we have different ways of seeing certain things. And what it does is it can cause problems. Paul is trying to put a stop to that. Right here. <clears throat> Let's move on. Verse 16, let, us, let not then your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. What he's saying there is we don't need to hover over these things and, and act like that's the main thing because it ain't. The main thing is Jesus. Amen. The main thing is love, joy, yeah. and peace. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a few years ago, we made a trip to Haiti. There was 11 of us. In that group, we had a pastor. We had a jewelry salesman. Y'all know him, Brother Cheryl. We had a plumber, a tree guy. We had a, um, a computer technician, geek t type person, whatever you want to call them. And I'm not saying geek because of an insult. That, I mean, there's, some, there's a business out there called the Geek Squad. Yeah. They make pretty good money. Yeah. In fact, when you need them, you want them at your house. <laughs> and you're willing to pay them whatever to fix the problem. <clears throat> we also had a nurse. We also had an electrician. 
We had uh, uh, a um, an engineer. We had a we had a a pretty wide selection of different people, and we all went and we all had a unified effort, and we had peace. And you know why? Because we kept the main thing, the main thing. Mm. That was Jesus. And what Jesus is doing over there in Haiti. When Jesus fails to be the main thing, and we start harping on things that ain't the main thing, Mm -hmm. that's when trouble comes. Mm -hmm. In any relationship, between husband and wife, between friends, between church people, between you and that person at work, whoever, He's primarily talking about right here brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus is the main thing, you can go anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, and have a good conversation and a good time with another fellow believer. Amen. When Jesus is the main thing. Verse 20, For meat, destroy not the work of God. In other words, for that preference that's been itching you and ribbing you about that other person, forget it. For that thing, don't destroy the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. Mm. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth or is offended or is made weak. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. Now to get this in real good perspective, let's look at ourself here. Some years back, probably in the 70s, it may have begun in the 60s, there was a movement amongst solid Christian people that said that a man shouldn't have any facial hair. I think it it began right after the hippie age. And the reason I think they said that was because the hippies would let their hair grow and they'd let all their hair grow on their face and they looked terrible. And not only that, the worst thing was is what they stood for. Mm-hmm. Okay? They didn't believe in God. <clears throat> they were rebels. Yeah. So if a man had any facial hair, he was associating himself with that group of people. And so this mindset and this teaching had moved right on in out of the 70s into the 80s even into the 90s. How many of you ever heard this? Okay. Well, did you know that it's not a sin for men to have facial hair? Right. And to the, for them to let it grow on their face? Right. It's not. I mean, the Bible said that Jesus had a beard. That's right. The fuck his beard. Right. But somehow, <laughs> amongst conservative Christian people, there become this idea that men with facial hair were sinning. It's not true. <laughs> Some of those same men said that if you wore a shirt to church that was any other color than white, you were sinning. How many of you heard this one? Yep. It was a liberating day when some of them decided, you know what, I could wear a a light blue shirt or a red shirt or a green one or a purple. Brother Lewis? Wear a black one. He can even wear a black one and he's not even gothic. (laughs) He loves the Lord. Amen. It's just not true. But what what has happened is for those that believe that and they saw Brother Lewis come in the church, they started praying for him because he might not be saved. Some of them would even go over to him and say, uh, Brother, what are you doing? 
don't you realize this isn't correct? I mean, there was division and strife because of a preference, an idea that, that, that emerged somewhere else than the Bible. Amen. Well, we do the same thing. It may not be the white shirt and the facial hair, but <clears throat> the type of shoes or the kind of, kind of glasses you wear or the, the music you might listen to, which, by the way, there's some music out there that is bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's bad. And then there's some music out there that's not bad. But it's not the kind of music you might listen to or sing in church. I like to listen to to piano music, and and uh, it and it doesn't have any lyrics. Um, I like to listen to music that has um, I don't even know the name of the instrument, but I just like the sound of it. <clears throat> I don't want to listen to any music that has lyrics that doesn't glorify God. Right. In fact, if it doesn't, if, if it says anything in it that doesn't glorify God, that's clearly, according to Scripture, not correct. Right. But then there's some music there that's kind of like in the middle out there. <clears throat> and if you think that that kind of music that I listen to is wrong, then you shouldn't listen to it. And neither should you get on to me for listening to it. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. If I don't think that you're right <clears throat> because of the, the, the color shirt you wear to church... That's between you and God. The Bible says here in Romans 14, we're going to give an account of ourselves individually. Yeah. I don't have to give an account for you. You don't have to give an account for me or that person. Are you all with me? Yes. <clears throat> There's many preferences that we all have that are not worth fighting over. In fact, God said not to even allow the thoughts to set up camp in your mind. Look back in verse 1. <clears throat> Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. He's saying there, <clears throat> it's okay. Don't let those thoughts build up in your mind where that you get to the point you don't even like that person or you hate them. That's just un, that's not, that's unbiblical. Convictions that are biblically based are necessary. To right. stand firm on. Right. Verse 19, we're going to read it again. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, mm. and things wherewith one may edify another. Strive to make peace diligently, look for ways to encourage each other. Don't make people feel bad by your left-handed comments concerning your differences. Mm. It ain't our job. It ain't my job to make, make you do things the way I think you should do them. It ain't your job to make that person do things the way you think they should do them. It's the Holy Spirit's job. Amen. <clears throat> we all have weird characteristics. If, if in fact if anybody has weird characteristics it's going to be me <clears throat> and because of that and I look at other people and they don't do it the way I do it I have the tendency of thinking that they're wrong for not doing it the way I do it mm -hmm. do you have that tendency? Yes. I think we all do to some degree or another what Paul is saying is guard against that mm -hmm. Guard against that. And again, we're not talking about convictions here. We're talking about preferences. Guard against that. If we're going to make peace with each other, we have to overlook those things. And when he says to, um, in verse 19, uh, and things wherewith one may edify another. Edify means build up. In other words, <clears throat> that person who does things differently than you do consistently and it irritates you because you don't think that's right, what he's saying right there is look for the good in that person mm -hmm. and bring it up. Mm -hmm. 
Mention it to them. Praise them for it. That's what edification is. It's encouragement. And if anybody needs encouraging, it's that person. Amen. In your mind, that irritates you because of the things that they do that you feel is wrong. Mm. And it's not that they need it so bad. It's that you need to give it. That's the important thing. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to make peace if we can't get past those things and enjoy the fact that we all love Jesus. He is the main thing. Mm -hmm. And when we circle around Him and do what He wants done, we'll have peace. We'll have joy. We'll have... um, A good time serving the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank You for Your Word and how that in this chapter and really many other places in Your Word, You've you've shown us how to love You, how to serve You, and to serve You alongside of other people that doesn't see things the way we do. Lord, help us to love each other. Help us to strive to Uh, edify each other because you died for all of us. We thank you for it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for 493.